Welcome to In Defense Of, making the case for overlooked, forgotten or derided movies in five minutes or less. Don't have five minutes? Here's five seconds. Well, what the hell took you so long? Today, In Defense Of. Deadly Bet, a 1992 straight-to-video fight flick and my first foray into the earlier works of Action Factory PM Entertainment. Vegas couple Angelo and Isabella have saved enough money to leave the City of Lights, but Angelo can't resist just one last bet. In one fell swoop, he loses both the savings and Isabella. Broken alone, Angelo succumbs to the city's vices and tumbles into a booze and gambling fueled existence. Can he pull himself out the hole and get back everything he lost? Also, everyone's a kickboxer. If you're unfamiliar with PM Entertainment and their output, watch one of my three earlier reviews. They cover mid-90s PM movies when the company was at its peak. Deadly Bet is from 1992 when they were just getting warmed up. This means that you shouldn't expect the insane car chases and absurdly large explosions from the golden era. Early PM is all shot on the cheap in LA or Vegas, in casinos, apartments and hotel rooms. Giant balls of flame may be off the menu, but the budget still stretches in the right way thanks to these bargain basement locations. We have just the one fight venue, moonlighting as several through some obvious set redressing. But there are over a dozen fights that take place here between tons of different pugilists, including some recognisable faces. Save money on the location, invest it into the action. PM fingerprints all over this one. What about another persistent part of PM output, their trademark weirdness? Never fear, it is here in spades. Our hero Angelo, it's Jeff Wincott, so I'm just going to call him Wincott, is a drunk and a gambling addict. How does he lose his girlfriend? He wages her as the winnings in a bet, which he then loses to bad guy Rico. Except Rico isn't such a bad guy. He provides for Isabella and seems to have genuine affection for her. The movie suggests that he's long been an admirer, sees an opportunity to spend time with her and takes it, then makes the best of the somewhat awkward circumstances that brought them together. And this isn't accidental, there are multiple scenes where Isabella presumes that Rico is controlling or doesn't care for her, only to be shown that she's wrong. Now, I can see why you'd make a film where the hero is an alcohol-soaked addict who makes very poor decisions. A good old redemption story. But why would you make the bad guy so charming, successful and caring? This is typical PM weirdness and it's why I love them. There's a little bit of movie magic right at the start of the film where the music over the credits turns out to be diegetic, or actual sound implied to be playing in the film world rather than mood music. And if my luck keeps holding to nice bit of flair appropriate with the Vegas setting. That wasn't enough though, as it happens again later. There's a Wincott puts his life back together montage with a lovely acoustic folk song playing, which turns out to be diegetic. If you don't know where even is. I don't know why I love this so much, it's just a nice little detail that doesn't need to be there. Like when Wincott initially loses Isabella and looks for her at her best friend Doris's place, and Doris is cheating on her partner. No need for it, but it just adds an extra dash of paranoia and anxiety to Wincott's plight. After this, Mission of Justice and Last Man Standing, I'm convinced that he is the best actor of all the 90s director video guys. Just three minutes into the film, my wildest dream comes true. Wincott and Gary Daniels, together at last. Gary doesn't have any lines, sadly, but the appearance of a couple of unsung PM heroes makes up for that. Mark Camacho is the man behind the fight choreography for many PM flicks, and Cole McKay is responsible for the insane stunt sequences. Both would even go on to direct for the company, and they are PM through and through. Nice to see you, lads. <laughs> There's simply no reason for Deadly Bet to stand out amongst the glut of straight-to-video tournament fighting films, unless you're some sort of weirdo who'd seek out a movie just because it contains both Gary Daniels and Jeff Wincott. Our main couple's life savings are established as being $4,000, which are ad hoc turned into $15,000, which are then promptly lost. Wincott later wins $5,000 easy by beating two guys in a fight. Okay, so he's back to where he started, plus a grand. But then he bets that $5,000 on a basketball game, which he loses. What? Why? Go get your girl and leave. <laughs> I'm gonna say Roadhouse. Partly because it means I get to pimp my own review, but mainly because there's a bit in Deadly Bet where it looks like Wincott has walked into low budget knockoff Roadhouse. Look, it's Patrick Swayze. PM Entertainment are the gift that keeps on giving the bottomless jackpot for action fans. Even their weaker pictures have redeeming value due to the ever-present streak of weirdness. It's found here in Deadly Bet's backwards character dynamics and fun narrative tricks. And in another top performance from Jeff Wincott, and you've got a definite highlight of PM's early years.
there's a fantastic article about the entire history of PM that I've linked in the comments. It features loads of behind the scenes stories, it's well worth a read. I find myself going back to it every few months. In it, director Richard Munchkin details the particulars of Deadly Bet's script. Your typical Hollywood screenplay is 90 to 120 pages, roughly one page per minute. Deadly Bets was only 42 pages long. The entire finale, that 50-man kickboxing tournament which lasts 15 minutes, is written in just one line. He goes to a big fight and wins. 